Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a restoration video on this little plum hatchet here. Um, as you can see, uh, this is kind of what they refer to as a uh, like a Boy Scout hatchet. Uh, it's a pretty cool little tool. Um, it's a good little hatchet. Uh, it's really small, which I, I kind of like. Um, <clears throat> it's got the little notch here which I have been told is for removing uh, nails. Um, even though you don't really want to pound nails in with a hatchet like this or a good little tool like this. Um, in a pinch, I'm sure it comes in pretty handy pounding in tent stakes and things like that. Um, my dad actually found this uh, kind of in the middle of the woods. Uh, just hiking around, found it laying on the ground and uh, picked it up. Uh, it was probably two or three years ago. Uh, this is the original handle that was on it. As you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. Um, this, when I say original, I shouldn't, I don't mean the original handle that came with the hatchet. That's the handle that uh, was on there when my father found it. Um, it took me that, that, that many years to convince him this needed a new handle. He told me it was okay, uh, but I don't think handles are supposed to do that or wiggle around this much. Uh, so we're going to be doing a little restoration on this bad boy. Um, I don't think the rust is bad enough to need electrolysis. <clears throat> I think we can get most of this off with some uh, WD-40 and a Scotch-Brite pad. Um, try to clean it up. If it does need electrolysis, we'll definitely do that. Um, probably cut this handle off, replace it um, with one of these. I got a little link handle here. Um, I know a lot of people aren't a huge fan of link handles. They're a little bit cheaper. Um, they're not that amazing. Um, fortunately, I mean, you can see the, the grains aren't that great, and there's different colors of wood and, and all that jazz, but really for the money that they aren't that bad um, and there are different um, quality levels as you can see right here uh, to get this to focus um, this number right here is kind of the quality number I mean, as far as I, I've been uh, as I've seen um, so it's a number four which number one is obviously the best um, I have here uh, another one of their handles that I've purchased before and you can see that is a 19 um, there's definitely a huge difference in quality between these uh, two handles uh, the palm swell is a little bit bigger on the nicer handle the grains are actually much much better and uh, this has a really crummy lacquer all over it which is a pretty telltale sign of, of a cheaper handle whereas this is, is pretty much just just bare wood uh, there's a little bit of a wax on there I think they they'd put on there as a preservative because they probably don't know how long these are gonna hang on on their shelves and that's pretty straight she looks pretty good um, <clears throat> so this is the handle we're gonna be throwing on there um, it already has a sheath that I made when my dad first got it, um, so I'll be reusing that. It's a little rough. Uh, we'll try to bring it back to life a little bit with with some some open offs, um, and hopefully that'll work. Um, if that doesn't, then we'll be making a a new sheath for us. Uh, this is actually one of the very first leather projects I ever did. Um, so hopefully my skill has progressed a little bit since since doing this. So let's let's get started. Swings a nail to 
the floor Settlers and nails in every board Bird used to sail, the bird once so Across the shore Alright guys, looks like we got her all done. Um, definitely got the sheath looking a little bit better. Um, got some open offs on there. And uh, definitely softened it up. There's a couple of places where it's still a little stiff. You know, up here you can kind of see the leather is a little bit darker and kind of black. Um, probably a couple more treatments of, of uh, Obanoffs, and this thing will be ready to roll. Um, <clears throat> Obanoffs is easily my favorite uh, leather treatment. It's because it's, it's all natural. It's made in a town probably 20 minutes away from where I live. Uh, in Peck, Idaho, and the stuff just works unbelievably well. Um, I use it on every single piece of leather that, that I own, um, and even stuff that I don't own, I make other people use it. Um, so the sheath turned out pretty well, I took the screw out. Uh, when I first started making stuff, I really liked putting in screws, um, or yeah, screws with, with uh, nuts on them, and I really liked that for some odd reason. And um, I kind of switched over to rivets because they don't come loose and they don't come out, but you can still drill them out if um, you don't want them anymore. Uh, the hatchet itself, I think, turned out pretty darn well. You can actually read the logo now, which is cool. You can see that it says plum there. Uh, I left some of the patina on there. I think I could have got all this off and got it really clean. Um, but I kind of like it when they look like this. They look like they've been used. Um, they look like real tools. Um, Fortunately, there really wasn't much mushrooming on the back, really any, uh, so I didn't have to fix any of that. Um, and the blade, I think, turned out pretty good. It's still not perfect. There's a few little little imperfections up in here um, that I didn't didn't get out. Um, mostly because my dad isn't very nice with this stuff, so it wasn't um, a huge priority for me to get get some of that junk out of there. Um, or to make this this razor blade sharp, um, because number one he probably hurt himself, and number two, uh, <laughs> he uh, he doesn't take super good care of this stuff. Um, handle I think turned out pretty good. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here in the top that uh, I wasn't super happy with, but I think it's gonna be all right. Um, Definitely get some more boiled linseed oil on this thing and get it nice and, and, and swelled up here. Um, but, you know, I mean, these handles also aren't the, the absolute nicest handles in the world. Um, but honestly, for, for a hatchet, that's not going to see tons and tons and tons of action. Uh, I think that is, is just fine. Um, I know a lot of guys don't like to see the different colors. Um, the different coloration in the in the wood. They either want bright white or or this little bit brown. You know, one solid color. But um, like I said, the harder hard harder and harder to find really nice handles these days. Um, and with a tool like this, where I'm not going to be trying to split split rounds or you know chop down an entire tree, um, 
uh, a perfect handle is not completely necessary. But all in all, I think it turned out really well. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for putting up with uh, all my baloney and the goofy way that I do stuff. And hopefully I will uh, see you guys again in the next video. Thanks.